In this question we're going to consider the EMF induced in a rotating coil as it spins through a magnetic field. Fairly standard fare for A-level physics, nonetheless quite tricky I think. And In the first part we've been asked to consider what angle we need to turn the coil through in order for the EMF to be at its maximum value. And in order to think about this I want to put, imagine the coil in two positions. Well you might call horizontal and vertical or maybe one and two. In position one, I think it's straightforward enough to see that that is the position where most lines are going through the coil as it turns. Therefore, in position one, we can say that the flux linkage or N phi is at a maximum. In position two though, the, maximum, the flux linkage N phi is actually gonna be zero. This is not so tricky to see because in this place, in this position, the coils are actually running parallel to the magnetic flux lines. So, in effect, no lines are being cut. Now, we recall, of course, that Faraday's law tells us that the EMF induced is proportional to the rate of change of flux and not the number of lines of flux. In other words, N d phi dt. Now, in position number one, as we said, we have the maximum flux linkage. And after a small angle of rotation, let's say it moves anti-clockwise another five degrees, that means that the flux linkage is actually going to have gone down a bit, fairly obviously, but it's not that big a change. There will be a value of n delta phi over delta t, but perhaps not a very big one. The situation is different in position two though, because we are going to move from a position of no lines going through, or n phi zero, through to, after five degrees, n phi being something. So it's gone from zero to something. Now that something might not be very big, but going from zero to something is bigger as a change in a set amount of time than it is from going from a lot to almost a lot, which was what happened in figure one. Therefore, the rate of change is actually bigger in position two. This means that we need to turn our coil into a horizontal position, which means that the angle we need to turn is 60 degrees. The next part of the question asks us to find the minimum angle in radians through which the coil must rotate for the flux linkage to reach its maximum value. Now we talked about that in the first part and I think you can remember the maximum flux linkage is in what I've called position one, which therefore means that we have to turn our coil through 150 degrees. To convert that to radians, we work out the fraction at 150 degrees is of one turtle of one total rotation and times it by 2 pi. And when you work that out, you get 2.16 radians. And if you want that as a fraction, it's 5 over 6 pi radians. So in this part of the question, we're asked to work out what in fact that gradient represents. Well, we know that a gradient is always going to be the change in y divided by the change in x. So let's look at what we've got on the axis. Well, on the y-axis, we have flux linkage. Oh, that's n phi. So change in n phi over change in time. And of course, you should recognize that that's EMF. Next, we have to calculate the number of revolutions per minute made by the coil. Well, that's just a question of looking for the time period. The time period in this case is going to be 40 milliseconds. Don't forget the milliseconds. Lots of my students do. This means that the number of rotations in one minute is going to be 60 divided by the time for one, which is 40 times 10 to the minus three, which comes out as 1,500 turns in a minute. Our next task then is to calculate the peak EMF generated as the coil spins. By now you should be very familiar with the fact that the EMF is equal to minus N d phi over delta t, which of course is Faraday's law. In other words, we need to find the gradient of the graph. And since we want the peak value, we need to find the maximum gradient. And you could do that, except it's fiddly. There must be a better way. We're going to recall that N phi flux linkage is actually equal to BAN times the cosine of the angle theta at which the coil is sitting. 
And we can also recall from our work on circular motion earlier on in the course that theta equals omega t. And the omega is equal to the angular frequency. That means, therefore, that ban cosine theta, or omega t, as we're now going to write, is equal to n phi, the flux linkage. So we now have a way of working out the flux linkage at any point in the rotation. What we have now, then, is a formula for n phi. What we need is one for the rate of change of n phi. In other words, we just have to differentiate, differentiate that expression. Now, that's not really on the syllabus, but if you know how to do that, you will end up with B A N omega sine omega t. And don't forget the negative out the front. Therefore, we can say that the EMF is actually going to be equal to B A N omega sine omega t and we've dropped the minus sign because our faraday's law already has a minus sign in front of it now you might be thinking well i don't know about differentiation and fair enough if you don't because this formula is actually on the formula sheet but i thought it would be useful to see where in fact it comes from so now it's a question of considering when will this value of emf be greatest and of course it's going to be at the point where sine omega t reduces down to the value 1. In other words, we can say that the EMF maximum is going to be B A N omega. So now it's a question of working out what our values are. Well, we actually have flux linkage on the y-axis there, which of course is B A N. And we can read our maximum value off the graph. It's just the peak, 0.55 Weber turns. And omega, of course, is just 2 pi over t, the period. Which, of course, we know is 40 milliseconds. Therefore, EMF max equals 0 0.55 times 2 pi over 40 milliseconds. which comes out as 86.4 volts. We now have then the maximum EMF as 86.4. And I'm sure you don't need me to remind you that the EMF is equal to the negative of N delta phi over delta t. This time, don't forget, you can see the negative sign Lenz's law. So in other words, what we're looking at again is the gradient of the graph. So what I'm going to do is go through and add in some key points. The turning points of the graph, the gradient is zero. And so we were able to put zero at 20, 40, 60 and 80 on our graph. So that's a good start. Next, in a delightful pinky purpley color, I want to look for the places of maximum gradient, and that's going to be where our graph crosses the zero of the y-axis. And so we get maximum positive, maximum negative. So that's going up, that's going down. But we have to remember to multiply by the minus one from Lenz's law. This means that the first of our points going upwards, we would expect it to be 86.4 volts, but it's actually negative. In other words, we have to add it in the negative section of the y. And I'm just making arbitrary units up here, so I'm going to use the complete length of the graph. Now, for our second point, we see that the gradient is maximum negative, i.e. minus 86.4 volts, but we have to multiply again by minus 1 because of Lenz's law, and so it becomes a positive value. Now we can carry that process on through the other gradient points of maximum gradient along the graph like this and you'll begin to see a negative sine wave taking form before your eyes. It's at this point that you realise just how bad I am at drawing these graphs. I've been doing this for some years, more years than I care to remember and I still can't do it. But you can see quite clearly this is beginning somewhat 
to look like a minus sign curve. So you'll have this shape only, of course, yours will be much neater than mine. Nevertheless, it's clear what the shape is. And I suppose to put the cherry on the cake, we should label the axes as 86.4 and indeed minus 86.4. You could pretty much use whatever scale you want on that y-axis there. Last part. We've been asked to calculate the flux density, in other words, B. We know the coil has 550 turns, and we also know that our maximum value of Bn is going to be 0.55. And since we have this maximum value of flux linkage from our graph, we can easily get that what B is the flux density by just aligning up the values for A and N. So therefore B is going to be equal to 0.55 over 550 turns times 4 times 10 to the minus 3 meters squared. Shoving that into your calculator you get 0.25 teslas.